we're in English Canada, we are still in text-based theatre. That's the main voltage. That's what we run it through, and everything supports that. That there is that kind of theatre that says, no, actually, text isn't the centre anymore. It's how we tell the story, for better or for worse, around through all these other means, and the text somehow... And I want everything that technology can give me. I want to see the airplane fly out over my head in right. W.O. Mitchell. I want to see the wagon, you know. I want the video graphics. I want lots of money on stage. I, that may not be how I think of it. And in fact, what I'm applauding is not what's happening between the people, not the essence of the story or what the story or the narrative, you know. What I'm applauding is the spectacle which is no longer serving the story. Right. But, but and it's the same, I mean, as you start to, um, like, I, I've seen some wonderful visual um, equivalency of the imagistic work that Quebec used to do, or still does, um, in which the, the text has been created to serve what the technology can do. So the creation period that I talked about, oh, isn't it great you could all get together and you could work and have all of the stuff? You're, you're not taking the text and, and finding what enriches and deepens the text. What it is is you're having a lot of toys <laughs> that you want to play with. And, oh, wouldn't it be fantastic if, you know, if that happened and a big thing opened? Oh, yeah, okay, can you, okay, well, let me write, uh, bleh. And now that happens and how that actually fits. I mean, often I find that a text co kind of incoherent, or I see that it's, but it exists of, to serve the technology. The technology isn't serving the text. And narrative can be told in many ways. It can be dance yeah. narrative. It can be so many ways to... Well, I, I, dan I work with the Atlantic Ballet, and that's one of the things, that's why I work with them, is because I, I, I'm interested in all of the ways in which meaning is communicated without dialogue. So how do you how do you tell a, a clear story that has got plot and specific event? I guess you would say, as opposed to what I see in a lot of ballet, which is more conceptual. This is about loneliness. Everyone's lonely. Okay, I got it. I got to get on. No, now we're, you know, <laughs> now we're in love. Okay, okay, okay. okay get on. Uh, I want to talk about acting, because you act. Mm. What's what's that like to write? And act. It's is acting difficult? Is acting difficult? Uh, no, I think it's. I. I, I think it's. I, I hesitate to say fun, but acting it, it is play, right? You begin with play. I like the spontaneity of it, of being in the moment. I like. Uh, I. What, the other thing I like about it is the respect it gives me for the actors, so that when I'm a playwright, I remember that. You know, someone has to say this effing line. You know. Right. Uh, I love the interaction uh, with uh, other people on, on, on stage. I love inhabiting another character, somebody else, and, and spontaneously living in, 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 that, right. in that moment. You know, going someplace you don't, you... Isn't that a call escapism? Uh, probably. <laughs> But you know, it's um, escaping your life to play someone else's life. Yeah, so not exactly finding in yourself people that you didn't know were there. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, but the exploration of of that, why it is that stirring the teacup has. A meaning also, you know what I mean? Just realizing that all of you is the instrument, and 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 those looking for the moments like the top, yep. you know, you know, and 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 finding and, and finding those. So um, the blood sport of perception. <laughs> That's what I call it. Um, last two minutes. Mm. Advice for a young writer. Someone says, Sharon, I want to write. And you can give them five sentences of advice. What would you say? 
Can you stop? No. <laughs> uh, and if you can't, keep writing. Don't, you know, buy lottery tickets if you want. Your chances may be better at making if financial security is important. To you. And if they said, Sharon, what should I read? What should I read to help me write? What would you send them to read? Uh, I guess I would say live, <laughs> like read, but live. Go up north and work at a coal mine, if such a thing exists in the north. Go around people who you don't normally go around. Open your eyes. Stop shutting, you know, like, in order to survive, we've desensitized ourselves to all sorts of things. You know, open, uh, take down those shutters, right. and that isn't easy. That's painful. Uh, do that. Or read Noises Off. <laughs> Hope you could do as well. <laughs> or would you send them to read the Bible or read the Iliad or read Shakespeare or? I guess if I thought, I suppose, oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason why I asked that is I was talking to an English professor at the university and I said, I asked, um, it, was, it was a wonderful book, and, and I said, oh, are you teaching that? And she said, it was about that thick, I forget the title of it now. She said, no one in the class would read it. Like, I said, what do, you, what do you mean? She said, there's no point in talking about reading. They were going to watch the movie. And that's in a university class. And, she's, and so I could tell them to read the Bible and, and they would go home and say, what the hell, don't go to Sharon Pollock. She's a religious fanatic. <laughs> you know, like, I mean, who knows? But yeah, I, I, I think that that's true. People don't read. Um, if you were condemned to a uh, desert island and you could take one book, what would you take? One piece of writing, what would you take? I've been asked that question before, and I used to say Plutarch's Lives, because it's really thick. <laughs> <laughs> and not that easy to read. And, uh, you know, on the other hand, I might take a handicrafts book. <laughs> Thanks, Sharon. <laughs> this is great. We're out of tape. Yeah, okay. <laughs>